Hi everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader and this is the second part of my February reading wrap-up. I read three books in the second half of the month, uh, which I'm going to talk about, but first uh, I just want to mention that the long list for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction is going to be announced next week on Wednesday, March 8th. I love this book prize, and so I got together with Anna from A Case for Books and we filmed a joint uh, wish list video of eligible books that we want to see listed for this year's prize. So I'll put a link up in the corner uh, so you can watch that video after if you want to. We both had a lot of fun making it. Also, I wanted to mention I got to uh, do a really fun thing in the middle of the month where I got to go to the premiere of the new film The Lost City of Z, or The Lost City of Z, depending on where you live. This is based on a book of the same name written by David Grand. It's about a real British explorer named Percy Fawcett, who is played by Charlie Hunnam, and he travels to the Amazon multiple times, uh, searching for a fabled lost city. It's a great adventure story, but it also says something meaningful about imperialism and colonial culture. I think Charlie Hunnam was particularly good in this, and so I'll put in a little clip of uh, him talking about the film. And so really, that, that, I think that was the thing that I could relate to most with Fawcett, the sense of some deep longing and, you know, in the quiet of night, we ask ourselves these terrible, haunting questions like, what is the meaning of it all? and we have to f go on a personal journey to answer that question. So Fawcett was a man who sought to show that there was a real intelligence and sophistication to these lost cultures, which his own culture dismissed as primitive. It's an enjoyable and meditative film, so uh, I'd recommend it. So on to the books I read this month, and uh, two of the books, like coincidentally, both of the books have a fox on the cover, um, and I really like foxes, and so uh, you'd think like, oh, um, there's a fox on the cover, like, it probably will be like a cute story, uh, but no, uh, they're both quite like dark stories, and uh, they feature a lot of like death of animals. Uh, one has actual photos of dead animals in it, and the other uh, is about a taxidermist uh, who stuffs animals, <laughs> but they're both still really good books. And uh, the first book is A Line Made for Walking by Sarah Baum, and this is published by William Heinemann. I really admire this author's first novel, and uh, this book is her second. It continues with similar themes, like about isolation and our connection to animals and the natural world, but it's a real development of her writing style. The central character is Frankie, who is a 25-year-old woman uh, who is at once very sympathetic for how she finds it difficult to integrate into society, uh, but also very unlikable uh, for the extremely rude, antisocial way uh, she reacts to certain people, and particularly her own mother. She feels that uh, the world is wrong, and I am too small to fix it, too self-absorbed. She lives in her late grandmother's bungalow, uh, which is out in the country and no one else is around, and her sole preoccupation is creating art by photographing dead animals that she comes across. These photos are actually reproduced in the book, so you're sort of confronted with them on the page. Uh, but interestingly, Sarah Baum's agent told me that the American edition of this book won't include those photographs. This is a novel that speaks meaningfully about depression and the power of art. Despite how difficult her character is, I think a lot of people will relate to this story and Frankie's dilemma as a young woman who struggles to connect with others. I had the pleasure of meeting Sarah Baum and talking to her for a while at a reading she gave at a South London bookstore. Although her character in this novel is very prickly, I'm relieved to say that Sarah Baum herself is absolutely lovely and very friendly. Also reading at the event was John Boyne, whose novel I talked about in my last reading wrap-up video. So it was great to see these very different Irish authors in conversation. Next, I read English Animals by Laura Kay, and this is published by Little Brown. Uh, so this is the second book with a fox on the cover. This debut novel is told from the perspective of Mirka, who moved to England from her native Slovakia uh, when her family basically disowned her because she's a lesbian. She takes a job at a country estate which is struggling financially. It's run by a husband and wife uh, who are trying out a number of different businesses uh, to try to cover the costs of uh, this large estate. 
and uh, one of them is taxidermy. And, uh, and Mirka takes on this job and becomes a sort of assistant and finds to her surprise uh, that she's uh, quite talented at doing taxidermy. This is the story of a love triangle and the deep-seated prejudices uh, that some English people feel against immigrants. Although the prose style felt somewhat flat to me, I found this to be a really moving story about a romance, and uh, I particularly related to it as uh, someone who has immigrated to England myself, uh, and so I feel a certain remove from English culture and its traditions. The way that Laura Kay shows the deep-seated English ideologies that run through the people of this country is compelling. And finally, I read Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. Uh, I, this, this British cover is uh, beautiful, I think. I, I much prefer it to the American one. So this is Saunders' first novel, and I'm sure uh, many of you know uh, he's famed as a writer of short stories. Like I said in my recent book haul video, uh, this novel took me a while to get into because Saunders' style is so strange and the structure he creates is uh, a bit disorientating at first. Uh, but I became totally engrossed in it. It portrays a night in 1862 when Abraham Lincoln goes to visit the grave of his son Willie, who's died of typhoid. It gives voice to the spirits that inhabit this graveyard in the form of a play, so it's set out in lines of dialogue. But there are also sections which take lines from period documents, uh, many of which Saunders wholly created and invented himself. Uh, to give a perspective on the Lincolns and the boy's death. The combination of these two elements makes a moving portrait of Lincoln himself, who has experienced this enormous personal tragedy while also being a man at the center of a maelstrom of political and historic events, as this takes place in the early difficult years of the Civil War. Some people despise him and others venerate him, uh, but this novel gives him back his humanity in a way. Also, it depicts a large cast of fascinating characters in the spirits who surround him, uh, who can't get over the conflicts that they struggled with in their mortal lives. So this book is surreal and horrifying, yet it's also often hilariously funny. Uh, there's a spirit who's lumbered with a giant erection, which he sort of has to haul around with him. Uh, but then there are also scenes that are incredibly moving and emotional. Mostly it's bizarre, wild, and an incredibly original reading experience. I absolutely loved this novel. So those are the books that I've been reading lately. Uh, if you click show more, uh, you'll find links to my full reviews of these books. And also I'll put a link to uh, Anna's video and Anna's channel uh, where you can watch our joint Bailey's Prize predictions. But let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or if you have in fact read any of them, uh, let me know what you think of them. But also let me know if you have any predictions for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction. So thanks for watching and happy reading everyone.